Fighthype.com here with, actually, I mean, do I even need to say the name? I think everybody knows. I mean, we're looking at women's boxing right now, right? I mean, it's the GWOAT. It's the GWOAT, Clarissa Shields. Um, oh, damn. Damn. Look like, hold on a second. Let me, let, me see that, let me see that bicep again. Okay. Look like, look like you're putting on a little bit of muscle there. Look like you're getting yeah, small. I'm about, to, I'm about to shock the world March 5th. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are you really though? Like, are you really gonna shock the world? I mean, are, aren't we expecting think, a great performance? I think all my performances have been great, but this will for sure be a knockout. And I think that's what I've been missing from my resume, I guess, was like that signature, you know, knockout or whatever. But now I feel like this is the year of knockouts for me. So it's wow. gonna be a great Wow. Have you been like, have you been focusing on that? Like, have you been working on your power, your strength and all that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So I was benching uh, 135 barely back in June. And now I bench 185 and I can bench 135 12 times. So Damn. I know that I've, I've been working on not just my arm strength, but like my shoulders and, you know, my shoulders and my traps and my, my back and my triceps, biceps, just everything that can sit, even my legs, you know, and just strengthening my core, you know, to twist harder and, you know, have more twerk on my punches. And um, I've been, I, I spent months doing that, like not just a training camp for six weeks, but I've been working and strengthening all that for the past eight months. So I think people are going to be surprised by how much power I show in this fight. And I always show the power in the combination, but like, to see how they hurt, you know, how I'm a wobbler and how I'm a dropper and stuff. I think she's a great fighter, but I think uh, I've just trained too hard for her to even compete, I feel. Is, is that, is that, you know, getting a knockout, is, is that something that has kind of been a thorn in your side? Like, is that something you've really wanted to get? Or is it just like, whatever? Who don't want knockouts? You know, some people, I mean, some people don't. Some nah, people don't care about that. Everybody wants knockouts, you know, from myself to, like, the Shakur Stevenson. Like, we go out mm -hmm. there and, you, you know, use our skills and embarrass people 10 rounds and barely get touched, you know. Mm -hmm. we, we want the knockouts. You know, knockouts matter to us, but also us performing and looking well matters. So it's about finding that balance, but also with knockouts come with, like, actually – building that strength and I've never taken the time to really focus on my strength because I've always been so strong right and so powerful but it's like not just building the strength of, of, of my body but now even in sparring and even on pads where we're working on picking those shots and really and really digging them not so much of like throwing a 10 punch combination and making the girl look silly because she can't do nothing it's more of like you know we actually gonna sit down on our stuff to wear it, to wear it hurt. And it's a mind thing. Because sometimes when you're in a boxing match and you're feeling good, you start throwing your combinations, you're like, oh, I got this. And you just, you just keep having fun. But you got to be able to tell your mind, okay, you're having fun. Now I need you to go in here and I need you to hurt her, seriously hurt her, like drop her, mm -hmm. wobble her. I need you to, to, to do something extravagant. And that's a mental thing because when you let your hands go, you don't think about that, but you have to tell your mind, all right, enough with the enough with the pretty stuff mm -hmm. now let's get busy and let's go let's let's be mike tyson for a minute <laughs> <laughs> but is 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 that something like when you're in the middle of a fight because you know they always say don't go looking for the knockout don't go chasing the yeah, knockout yeah, yeah. stuff like that is, is that like when you're in the middle of of a fight like is there a time when you can tell okay you know, like i got this under control so now I'm going to start pressing for the knockout. Um, I mean, I feel like I go for the knockout every round. <laughs> I just wasn't doing it. I don't think I was doing it strategically. Mm. I, I think I go on there like I believe boxing is the hurt business. Mm -hmm. As much as I get in there and I out point girls, but I out everything. Man. I out punch them. I hurt them. I hit them with body shots, head shots. I'm just, I'm dominating, mm. right? But it's still just a difference to when you like, okay, you about to go 
for the KO. You just sit down on your punches more yeah. and you and you and you really focus on it. And we've been focusing on some very, very hard shots, not just one day, but every day at the gym when I'm sparring, you know, we working on noticing when like the shot is open, mm-hmm. when when just noticing when like the fighter is taking that deep breath where you're like, okay, get it now. While they while they trying to breathe, you need to be getting the letting your punches go and you know, shocking them, you know, and um, it's it's really a mind thing. It really is because my fans, because my hands are so fast, mm-hmm. but I, I also can, but I also hold power. So it's about picking those power shots, and I'm just super excited to display that because I've actually missed boxing. I haven't been in the ring to for a boxing match in 13 months, and all these other girls have been fighting. And uh, you know, Ring Magazine got me ranked number a number two pound pound now, which. The rankings don't really matter to me because I know that, you know, skillfully that I am the pound for pound number one. And as far as in accomplishments, I'm pound for pound number one. But it's just like, I just can't wait to show them that they, even though they've had all these other great matches and KD has fought maybe two or three times, that I'm that I'm still the head honcho. That I'm still the one who can have a 13-month layoff and come back and get a big, spectacular knockout and uh, look sharp doing it, and just let her, and just remind everybody who the vote is. That's all. Mm, mm. Yo, that's crazy that you said it's been 13 months. It doesn't even, mm. it doesn't even seem like that. But I mean, with the pandemic and everything, time really kind of has flown by. Has has that kind of like affected your mindset just being out 13 months because you know I, I know some fighters it kind of it, it drives them crazy that they haven't been in there for a long time like has that made you I don't know like maybe hungrier to get back in there um, I've always been hungry so it more of it kind of made me smart enough to be honest mm. you know even like financially you know realizing how much money I was spending and also realizing that you know boxing came to my only income because boxing will just drop you like that and then after that you don't you don't have any you don't have any income and you got to figure shit out and it just kind of like that was the part for me where I was like dang you know um you know I just I respect that I that I have that I have a God-given gift right and my God-given gift is to be a great to be a great boxer but to to see how women were treated during this pandemic in the sport of boxing is like you know what um it's time to make sure i have other avenues and that um that no boxing network feel like i need them you know what i mean like i don't i don't need you to have a career like i'm gonna have option a option b option c and um that's why I added MMA to my career. And MMA has guaranteed dollars that boxing has never offered me. Wow. Wow. I mean, how do you, like, like, like what, like when you talk about that, the way MMA has, has guaranteed you, you know, that type of money where boxing has it, is, is it, is it, is it really like the commitment that they're putting into you is—is is that kind of like what you're talking about when you when when you say the guaranteed money, like the commitment that the PFL is saying, "Hey, like we're behind you, and you know we want to do this." So here it is. Whereas maybe you know a, a boxing network like Showtime or, or or a platform like the Zone, maybe you know the, it, they're more of like a one-off type of thing. Um, when I when I say it's guaranteed, like definitely just like the three-year contract with the PFL. It's not like a one-fight deal thing. It's three years. And, you know, this year, this is my first year with the PFL. I have my first fight. My mate made a debut in June. And then I fight again probably like November, December. So two MMA matches, but I have a guaranteed money for that. Okay. And then and then just going into – um, and then just going into like, honestly, the, like 2022 – where I'll well, where I'll have the chance to decide if I'm ready for the PFL league, and that's guaranteed a million dollars. Wow! Like, so, so I mean, boxing don't offer that. Boxing don't offer that, and if and if boxing did offer that, I wouldn't be able to get the girls inside the ring because they're because they're scared. So, right. mm-hmm. the only time I've ever heard a million dollars being mentioned to me, or or like to my team, 
was when um, we were when we were chasing Cecilia Rockets, mm. and we were going from 168 to 154, and we thought we'd be able to fight her at 154. We thought she would come up, and I guess Showtime said that we would get a million dollars a piece and we can make that fight happen, but Cecilia wasn't down with it, and she ran to the zone, and um, those those talks died. And uh, Tom Lofter became sour about it because he know that his fighter can't fuck with me. He's still, you he's know? still, he's still a little, he's still a little salty too, right? I, I, I saw him talking yeah. a little smack. Yeah. Tom Lofter is so salty. Yeah. And, and he's so mad that one. <laughs> Cecilia Brock has lost to Jessica McCaskill, who was only nine and no. Mm-hmm. Like what the heck? And then he just, you know, he just walk around like Cecilia just. She's a, she's a good fighter, don't get me wrong. She's the first woman to be undisputed, but she's not the best fighter. Mm. And she definitely hasn't fought the best because how come she never fought against Hannah Gables at 154 and she's at 147? I mean, like, they're right there. How, True. how come you guys won't fight? She picks her opponents. And I think that when she picked uh, Jessica McCaskill, it was cherry-picking going wrong. She thought Jessica McCaskill was going to come in there and not – and not try to win, and Jessica McCaskill came with a whole different game plan and beat her. Mm, mm. Has she? Has she? I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but she's been at 147 like her whole career, hasn't she? She only got one division under her name. She ain't never won no other divisions. Just 147. Never fought at 54, 40, mm. 60. Only 147. Do you think that's what? Go ahead. Everybody. Everybody can't do what I do. Everybody right. can't fight at 154, 160, 168. I could fight at 175, and I could fight at 147. Everybody can't do it. That's, that's that's just crazy. But but do you think that's what separates greatness in fighters is, like, the ability to, like, test yourself, you know, whether it's moving up in weight, moving down in weight? Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely, absolutely. Like, what Canelo was doing, I feel like he's – He's doing some great stuff. You know, he's fighting a different weight class. I just wish he would fight the fights that the fans want to see. Yeah. Like, we wanted to see him fight against Charlo for a very long time. You know, for me, I just go to these weight classes, and whoever is number one, that's who I fight. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I don't really care about the number twos. I mean, the number twos are all right and the number threes, but I don't really be caring about the number twos and three. Give me give me who y'all think is the best. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and that's who I want to be. But to be able to – still move and still be able to have my strength, have my power, not be drained at 54, to not feel too heavy at 68, to even make 60 is like, you got to be, you got to, you got to have different skills for different weight classes. And, and they say the, the lower you go, the more skillful the girls are, which I think is very incorrect. I think that 160 has the most skillful fighters in the game, Mm. period. Like, when we talk about women's boxing, it's at 160. But for some reason, the smaller weight class is, like, 35 and 40. And even 47 get, like, all, like, get all the get all the credit. I don't know if it's because they're smaller or people like to see smaller women fight. I don't know. But as far as in skills, the only woman who I think has any – who has really, really good, like, like good skills that's even close to mine is Katie Taylor mm-hmm. and Amanda Serrano because, I mean, her knockout power is phenomenal. But anybody else is, like – None of those smaller girls I can say like, oh, she's she's better, she's better skilled than me, or she does this or she does that. Like, I'm probably faster than all the girls at 135 and 40. I know I definitely punch harder. And as far as in different boxing styles that I have, I can go out there and get the win however I want to get it. I can go out, I can go out there and bounce around like I'm Muhammad Ali. I can go out there like I'm Frazier and go get you. I can be like Mike Tyson, have everything short and tight. I can box like Sugar Ray Robinson, you know, have the fast hands and kill you to the body and, 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 and you know, and, and just beat you to the head. You got to have a di- you got to have a lot of different, different styles when you want to be a winner in all these different weight classes. You can't fight everybody the same. Yeah. Yeah. You got to have an A, B, C, D, E, F, G plan. Um, and, and I think you've, I like, I mean, I've seen, I think I've seen every single one of your fights and I think, you know, throughout your career, I think you've exhibited that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think you've exhibited bits and pieces of all those guys. Do, do you think you get the credit for that? Like, do you think people are, 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 are giving you your just due for your boxing ability? I mean, you know, not, be, not being just a brawler, but, you know, also, you know, being able to brawl, but being able to move, being slick. 
good defense? Like, are, are you saying, I see you laughing, so I, I feel like you're about to say, hell no, I ain't getting the credit. <laughs> you know, I try not to let myself think about that kind of stuff because I know for a fact that I'm, that I'm better skilled than 95% of the men in that box. Mm. God knew what he was doing with me when he didn't bless me with a piece. God knew what he was doing. <laughs> I'm telling you, because if I would, if, if I was a man, I would have these same accomplishments. Mm. Same accomplishments. Mm. And the biggest fight right now would be me versus Canelo. Oh, wow. If I was, if, if I was a man. Wow. If I wow. was a man, because I possess that kind of skill, that kind of power. Now, I said if I was a man, so I would not have a, a woman's body. I'm already strong now. But if I was a man, I would be stronger, right? But if I possess the same skill that I have in a, in a man's body, I would have the same accomplishments. And me and, me and Canelo would be the match to make if, if I was a man. Wow. So when we talk about skills and everything, I always try to tell myself, just, 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 just keep getting better. Um, keep studying my own film and criticizing myself, even when everybody else tell me like, "Oh, that was a wonderful performance. You shouldn't even watch it. That was beautiful." I always go back and watch it and find my mistakes and fix them. Mm -hmm. And I continue to learn, no matter how great I think I am. I continue to learn and add more to my arsenal. Every fight, every camp, I talk to different fighters all the time and ask them, "Oh, I saw you fight when you did this. Can you explain that to me?" They explain it to me, and I keep it with me forever, and I use it in some of my fights. Mm -hmm. And I know that I'm very, very, very skilled, you know. So people, people give me my credit, but I feel like in order for me to get my full credit, I do have to do like extra, like get the knockouts. Like I have to go out there, show these skills, and then get the finishes. Like I can't just go out there and have a great 10-round decision and make a girl look silly 10 rounds and hurt her and beat her up. And people say, yeah, well, she didn't knock her out. It's always, but but she didn't knock her out. But she didn't knock her out. Mm -hmm. When it's like, for me, the not, it's still like, I'm not, I only got 10 fights, you know, and I don't know everything about professional boxing. I'm still figuring out stuff about me as a fighter as I'm continuing to grow. But mm -hmm. I'm doing it better than girls who got 36 fights, though. There's not, there's not a girl who you can tell me who has a better ring IQ than I have to figure out a fighter um, if I get in there with a girl one time and we, and we fight, the next, the next time I fight her, it's going to be a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like the fight with Katie Taylor and Delphine Pursum, the how close that fight was the first time, it was just as close like that the second time. Mm -hmm. But Katie did, she did a lot more moving and letting her hands go, but it was still rough, still close. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be that way for me. What's going on? Someone probably tried to call you. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, you, you mentioned, you know, you only had, I mean, you've only had 10 fights, but at the same time, there's, you know, there's, there's men, there's, there's Lomachenko who haven't had a lot of fights, but, you know, I mean, when they talk about Lomachenko, it's like, oh, the major, he's so great. You got to watch him, da, 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 da. Do, do you feel like you don't get that? same type it's not I mean again it's not that you don't get praised because I, I know there are people out there that do praise your skills your greatness and stuff like that but not on the same level as they might do a Lomachenko do you feel like that's because you're a woman or, or do you feel like it's be, not just because you're a woman but because you're also a black woman you know because I, I mean you know you know what it's like for us you know sometimes you know they always say we got to work twice as hard as you know, someone who's not black and, you know, is it all of that or is it just, is it just circumstances? I don't know, to be honest. I know, I know that I'm more accomplished than Lomachenko. Yeah. I, I know that. And uh, people were trying to say something about when I became three-time division world champ faster than him. They were saying something like, oh, it's women's boxing. And it was like. What's that mean though? Yeah, like, I don't know. Like what's and, that mean? <laughs> um, I, I, I'm like, I'm like, yeah. Like, did I not fight? Like, did I fight the best or not? That's right. all that matters to me. It don't matter if there's eight girls in the weight class, the ten to twenty. I beat number one. I didn't fight number eight for this world title. Mm -hmm. I didn't fight number three. I fought number one. Mm -hmm. So 
that's what kind of blows me. It's like Lomachenko wasn't fighting number one guys. Right. You know what I mean? Like he fought against Tiafimo, but who else did he fight against that was like a number one guy? Right. Jorge Linares is pretty good. Mm-hmm. But then we had a sniper. I forgot his name. Pedraza. Yeah, mm-hmm. Pedraza. He dropped him. Mm-hmm. Um, It's just like he's still not fighting against the number one. Like he ain't fighting against Devin Haney. You know, he just fought Tiafimo. Um, I remember when he fought against Jason Sosa. I didn't even know who Jason Sosa was. No disrespect to Jason Sosa. But right. I just was like, you know, I just tuned into the fights because it's Lomachenko fighting. And I and I want to see him do his slick little moves and put people's hands down. And, you know, I want to see him perform. Right. You know, so people got to say that stuff. But it was like they don't understand that they're being, like, purely sexist when they, when they say that because I have two Olympic gold medals just like Lomachenko. Mm. I went to 2012 and 2016 Olympics and fought three times each Olympics mm-hmm. and got gold. So um, I don't know what makes my fights be any easier than his, you know. And then when you talk about the pros, it's like I can't help if a if a weight class got ten girls to five to four. All I know is I'm going to beat the number one. And whoever the number one girl is, like however great she is, that's on her. Mm-hmm. But I'm not gonna dumb it down to her level. Like if 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 I'm great and she's good, that's not my fault. I'm gonna go out there and perform like the great that I am. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why when Lomachenko outpoint people, everybody praising for his skills. But when I outpoint somebody, they say, "But you didn't get the knockout." And right. it's like, I don't know. It's just it's just weird to me. But I don't. I just always say like I haven't been pro boxing that long. Like I think when we had this conversation. You know, three years from now, it'd be a whole different kind of conversation. But I yeah. feel like everything just happens with time, you know. And I'm also 25 too. So even though I, when I when when I think about the past, and I was, you know, 21 coming out from the Olympics, I always think like I would be like a multi-millionaire by you know by this time, mm-hmm. you know. And it doesn't it, it doesn't bother me a lot that I'm not. But I always ask myself, like, damn, what else do you got to do? If you can, you did all this already. What else, what else do you have to do to right. actually be a multi-millionaire and have, you know, and actually get the respect and uh, get the money and, and, you know, get the checks? Like, what else do you have to do? Mm-hmm. And um, you gotta go, I don't know. You got you to gotta go to purse bids like Tia Fimo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which, which, <laughs> since you bring it up, men face some kind of equality, too. Mm. Right mm. to see that you know he's voicing the opinion about what he was being for, uh, what he's been getting paid for a very long time. He's one of those fighters who who actually voiced that. Yeah, you know, and um, you know him being able to say like now he's making you know six million for a fight, but was offered only one million by top rank. It's like that's him knowing his worth, mm-hmm. right? And uh, him knowing how big he is and how much of a star he is, you know, so. He's taking full advantage of that, and that's what I'm doing with my pay per view fight on March 5th. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, but that's the that's the double standard. That's the double congrats. standard. I was I was like I was trying to get at, so to speak, is is you see what Tia Fimo did. He's very vocal. You know, he's always been vocal about his worth, right? So mm-hmm. when he makes a move like this, he gets praised. Oh, Tia Fimo, he knew his worth. Da 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 da. But when you're being vocal, you know, when you're out there saying, listen, I, you know, I should be getting paid like they're getting paid. Like people want to discredit you. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, people are only, people are only praising it. What, what Tio Fimo did because it's more money. Mm. Mm-hmm. So if this pay per view come out and I do hundreds of thousands of buys and I make a whole lot of money, people will say, oh, wow. She leaped out on faith because I don't even know what numbers I'm going to get for the pay per view. I don't know how much my purse is going to be yet. I won't know anything after the fight. I'm just training my ass off, getting ready, about to perform, hoping that what I'm doing will lift myself and women's boxing. That's mm-hmm. it, right? But if this turns out well, and I make more money than I would have made fighting for Showtime or for any other other network, because other networks offer me pennies for fights. Mm. Wow. If I make more than those networks, then I'll be able. To say, oh, I did this many pay-per-view buys, I did this and that, and I and I generated this much 
Then people will say, oh, wow. Look, she went and fought pay-per-view, and we all thought pay-per-view for women was dead, but look at what she did. Mm -hmm. That's when they praise you when everybody see them numbers. If Tia Fimo would have went and signed with Triller, and they would have signed him, let's say if um, top rank off in the $1 million and he would have got $1.2 million with, with like Triller, Mm -hmm. People wouldn't. People wouldn't be celebrating it the way they is. But he hit the bank. Right. He gets six. So that's people like, whoa. Mm -hmm. He he really, cause Triller see his worth. But that's what I'm saying. Like people, stuff like that gotta happen. If the numbers was one million compared to one point two, everybody wouldn't be like, oh yeah, Tia Fimo when he he learned his worth. They'd be like. All he did was go and get 200K more. He should have stuck with top rank. <laughs> right? But since now with 6 million compared to one, people are like, oh, my. And, and even me. I'm like, congrats, my boy. Mm -hmm. That's how you do that. Yeah. That's, that's what you do. We got my full respect. Mm -hmm. But like I said, people don't people don't praise until they see them dollars. So they see right. that money. Then everybody like, oh, yeah, yeah. That, she made the right decision. That's the right thing to do. Right, right. But it's actually, it, it's <laughs> actually, since you, you mentioned the numbers, um, you know, Tia, at the, when all is said and done, when everybody's getting paid, because the bid was for $6 million, So, you know, Tio gets 65% of that, which is roughly $4 million, And then Cambosis gets the 35%. Um, then you, you, you got to subtract top ranks, 800000 um, and then he's got to pay his management, split, split team management. Then you got to pay the sanctioning fees. So really that 6 million number gets whittled down to, he'll probably, it's probably going to be more like 2.5 to three, somewhere around there, which don't get me wrong. That's still great. You know what I'm saying? Like that's way more than he was going to get originally, but it's blown up. Like he's winning though. Of course. He's winning. Of course. To fight, but what, but, but to, fight, what? to fight on to fight on Triller. Right. He's building his brand. So they may come at him with six million for this fight, but next fight it'll be ten. Right. I know, absolutely, of course. But what I'm saying is that are they gonna blow it up for you too? Do you know what I'm saying? Like let's say let's say your pay-per-view numbers are 150,000, 200,000. Those are great numbers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For women's boxing. But are they going to praise it as great numbers? Or are they going to be like, oh, that, that, that pay-per-view flopped. It didn't do a million. But you know what I'm saying? Like, are they going to give you your credit for that? The same way you know, that T.O. is getting I honestly, credit. I honestly, have, I honestly have no idea. But yeah. if I do 100,000 buys to 50,000, 75, 150. I'm a cry. Period. Listen, I, like, I listen. That's I, a big deal. For that's me. a huge deal. That's a huge. I think and if, because if you do 25, has a platform. Yeah, 25. Right. 25,000 because women's boxing hasn't been on this platform in exactly. 20 years. Exactly. exactly. You know, and we're talking about Layla Ali versus Jackie Frazier, and that's Muhammad Ali daughter and Joe Frazier daughter. Yep. Right, people are tuning in because of Muhammad Ali, and maybe a few people tuned in, a few thousand tuned in because it was Layla Ali versus Jackie Frazier. Mm -hmm. But their dads had a lot to do with that. Yeah, I'm coming into this straight from Flint, Michigan. Mm -hmm. Poor, didn't even have a bed till I was 16 years old. Wow, fought in the Olympics, won 2012 when I was 17, went back again, won again. Didn't know what I was going to do after my second Olympics because it was like there was no future for women's boxing. But I turned pro with a blind eye, not even knowing what to expect, just hoping and praying that God would maneuver the universe to work for me. And he did. And I got plenty of opportunities to fight on Showtime, to fight on The Zone, to fight on HBO. Now I have 380K followers on Instagram. And that's more followers than a lot of people's favorite fighters. Mm -hmm. True, facts. And I got and I got a lot of followers on Facebook. Over my all my social media, I got about five hundred k to six hundred k followers. Mm -hmm. And so now it's like I've been building my brand just just me and my team, just me and my team building my brand, taking advantage of every opportunity, taking these big hard fights, 
We know that we can win, but they were tough. Fighting against Hannah Gabriel was tough. Fighting against Christina Hammer was tough. And I'm not saying it was tough inside the ring, but having to go down the go down to 160, you know, fight against a girl who was, you know, fucking trolling me the whole fight. Like trolling me be, before we even signed contracts to fight each other, trolling me, disrespecting me. She got disrespectful and racist ass fans. Mm. I really took it from the bottom and worked my way all the way up to now be at this point to where I'm I'm, I'm now I'm doing it again. Taking mm-hmm. another leap of faith to fight pay per view, so it was not even about the numbers matter, but it's just about me knowing that I'm I'm building this by myself. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I'm doing it. It's, it's, it's me, God, and my it's me, God, and my team. That's it. Yeah. And yeah. God gave me the job to be the one because if it was any other woman who made 350k for a boxing match. She wouldn't care about what the other women are making. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's like, well, that's on them. I'm trying to lift the whole sport by doing yeah. what I'm doing. And and with me doing that, I'm taking a huge risk. And I feel like that should be respected. So whatever the numbers are, just know that I worked hard to get mm-hmm. to where I am. Yeah. And that I gave everything. And if don't nobody respect that, Hey, it's on them. I know I respect it, and and I know how hard I work, and I know what I'm doing for. Yeah. That's what matters to me. So whatever the numbers are, twenty five thousand, fifty, seventy five, a hundred, I'm gonna be happy because who did I had it? Who gave me some help? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what, and that, and that's what I was getting at, and that's what I mean when you know when I talk about you getting the credit you deserve. I mean, even if it's only. <laughs> I mean, if it's one pay-per-view buy, I feel like people should really be praising what you've done for not just women's boxing, but for the sport of boxing. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, and without having a team, without having any help, without having, you know, this big promotional, you know, uh, 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 conglomerate behind you, you know, big giant network or anything. I mean, Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you got Dimitri Salida, you know, I know you got Mark Taffet, but still that's like, that's a, that's a smaller team. You know what I'm saying? And you guys, yeah, we don't, we, man, listen, it's, it's, we got, we got Mark Taffet, the brains, the pay-per-view brains. We got Demetrius Salina, he's the promoter. But at the same time, you got a, a woman fighter who I got to go to the gym, I got to train. And, and, and even now, I got to get into the business aspect of boxing because I got to know what's going on. I got I to gotta be active on social media. I don't get to just train, you know what I mean? Like the men get to just train, look like, look like shit, and get another opportunity. <laughs> 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 Me, I can't do that. Yeah, I gotta overperform. I gotta keep putting the word out about my fight. Um, I gotta bring all these eyes to me. You know what I'm saying? And it's like the men don't gotta do this, mm-hmm. but guess what? They, but they still get another opportunity to be on TV, fight pay per view, whatever. Is that is that hard to like compartmentalize to like take all that that you just said? I gotta worry about this. I gotta worry about that. Da da da. Put that to the side and still go in the gym and train and focus just on boxing or, or, or is that, is that tough for you? It's a, it's a, it, it takes a lot of mental strength and I just try to know when it's to cut this off and cut it on. Like I let my team know like, Hey, I don't want to do any interviews for a couple of days. Like my brain is tired of answering questions. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I got to spend time in the gym. I got to make weight. Like I got to drink a gallon and a half of water every damn day. Like, I got a lot of stuff that I'm trying to do. You know what I'm saying? Then on top of social media, and, and they want me to post this, they want me to post that. Like, I had to get some help this camp where I'm like... Assistant. I gave, I gave the PR, like, hey, you're going to my Instagram login. Look, you post that shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not that I don't like Instagram because I got 380,000 organic followers. Yeah. It's just like... Sometimes I just do not want to think about that. Like, I really want to just focus on what I want to focus on. And that's going out there and having a great fight. And whatever happens, happens. Because guess what? Life keeps going on. I'll get another opportunity. Um, and I'll take advantage of it. And I'll keep fighting the best. And one day, the table just going to turn. Mm-hmm. 
and 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 that's what I believe. Like how Tiafimo just got his big break, I feel like my big break is coming right around the corner. It's coming. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's I coming. think I think this might be it. I think this might be it right now with the pay per view. Um, um, speaking of the pay per view, before I get to Marie, and I apologize for taking up so much time talking about that other stuff, but you you was flowing, so I was like, all right, <laughs> let's, let's keep going. Um, like, how did the pay-per-view itself come about? I mean, I know there was a time period, you know, the, I think there were, you were talking to Showtime at one point. I know you, you know, you had a fight on the zone. At what point did, did you guys, did you, your team, did you, that, that you, you, you just said, you know what? Let's just take it to pay-per-view. We're going to do it ourselves. So much, so much stuff happened. Like I had so many days just get pushed back get canceled so many verbal promises by the network of showtime mm. and um it just got to a point where it was like it just got so frustrating to where it was like one minute we got a five day locked in or or they're going to tell us today and then all of a sudden it's like they had told me i was supposed to fight september 26 what day was that <laughs> that was when both charlos fought pay-per-view that's right that's right. Right? So I'm like, oh, I'm going to be the TV opener? What's <laughs> up? This is great, you know? Mm -hmm. They said, okay, um, how about October 3rd, a week after that? And I was like, all right, main event. Wait to get a word back for them that they locked in October 3rd. The word back we got from them was, you know, we're not going to be able to get you in the ring until 2021. <laughs> Wow. And that was like, like I said, this is way back in October. So I've already been training, you know, I've already been training, we waiting to get a word, waiting to sign contracts because we gave them our loyalty and our trust that if they gave us their word, like they have in the past, that they would execute. Mm -hmm. As I've always executed for them. True. But that wasn't the case. So after the October 3rd talk, after they said, hey, you know, sorry, they, they announced their whole premier boxing champion stuff and all their little Showtime fights. I was nowhere on there. Mm. And um, I thought it was, you know, truly just disrespectful and and honestly hurtful. You know, but at the same time, it's like, you know what? Um, I'm 25 years old. I'm not going to keep putting my career up on hold for them. You know, stopping my greatness. Mm -hmm. Like, fuck that. You know, so... Uh, Mark was trying to figure out, you know, what we wanted to do, and I'm just like, look, I don't, look, I don't care if we fucking fight on YouTube. Like, I need to get in the ring. Like, all my, all my fans want to see me fight. All my fans is like, they, they, I'm ready to fight. They want to see me fight. We got an opponent. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Where we going? We going to YouTube? Where we going? What we doing? Mm -hmm. And um, finally, uh, we, we even had talk to Dana White. Um, almost had a fight booked in December, but last minute that fell through. And uh, something did about they a say, bubble. I was about was to say, did they say why? A bubble situation or something like that. So I was like, what mm -hmm. the hell? So now, after that, you know, I just was like, you know what? We need to go to pay per view. And mm -hmm. I'm like, um, we need to throw our own card, you know, have our own fights and just. Jump out on faith and know that my fans will tune in to to my fights, and um, we need to see what the numbers are because if they're going to keep telling us that we're not pay per view ready or that we need more of this or more of that, we need to have some kind of numbers to build off of. Mm -hmm. Got to, and I'm like, you know, this is a perfect fight. I'm about to fight to be undisputed two times. This is the I'll be the first boxer to do it in the four belt era. This needs to be done, and he was like, well, you know. And we and we and we all talk. We're gonna get big risks. We don't know the numbers, so we mm -hmm. don't know the numbers. And if and if don't nobody ever fight pay per view, we'll never know. True. True. We'll never know. Like what was the men's first pay per view fight numbers? Right. Way back <laughs> when. Right. <laughs> nobody talks about it, but whatever mm -hmm. the numbers were, they took that and they built off of it. That's all I want to do. So mm -hmm. when I do start getting a hundred thousand and the hundred fifties and the two hundred thousand. I just want to know, like, well, shit, the damn, the damn first one was this much, and this is what we did with that number, mm. Mm. you know, and then, like, the second one was this much, and this is what we did with that number, 
it it has to get bigger. It's not going to stay the same. It's not it's not going to stay the same because of the opportunities and the things that it will build up. You know, and and, and it be other girls who want to fight, and they'll be able to come get some of my fans. Mm-hmm. And now we're getting each other fans and building up each other, right? That's how it goes. Like they use um Deontay Wilder to help build up. Um, I believe I, I want to say I'm saying it right. Earl Spence. I think Earl Spence fought on the undercard of Deontay Wilder before. Mm-hmm. I ain't really sure. I feel like I feel like I'm right though. But they use their top fighters to build up their upcoming guys. Yeah. And that's what women's boxing needs to do. And I feel like we need to have some statistics. So when the so when the networks say, well, you only got this many buys on pay per view, and we can be like, yeah, and this is how much I generated. So you can't pay me less than that. <laughs> and you got to start right. somewhere. You got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere, and you, and you got to be unafraid. And that's what I am. I am unafraid. I'm willing. I, I'm willing to take some risk, and I'm willing to keep going. Like it's not going to be another twenty years before there's another woman pay per view fight. Not on my watch. Mm. I'm gonna do it again, and again, and again. And if Showtime ever want to come back and say, "Hey, we want to put you on pay per view," they gotta not not now. I gotta pay double. Mm-hmm. And triple because they played me. So, and and that's for all the networks. You know, Premier Boxing Champions don't even have no women on their stable. Not they don't. Not, not one. Not one. At least top the rank got, got a token. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That you know, all but, the other ones have a token at least, but PBC has none. <laughs> none. And then the Zom got it. He got it going for the girls over there in the UK, mm-hmm. but he ain't he ain't trying to push no girls from the USA though. 